Hi everyone, Simon Bell here, Professor of Marketing at the University of Melbourne. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here today and share with you uh, in the next four minutes, some thoughts that I have on the future of marketing strategy research. I can't do the whole field justice. So I've zoomed in on one particular theory that marketers love and use a lot, not always that well, I might add, namely resource-based view of the firm or, and its variants, dynamic capabilities theory, et cetera. So, where can we go with this theory? How can we make a contribution? How can we uh, use it more effectively to explain market uh, uh, competitive advantage in firms uh, and the effectiveness of marketing strategy? Well, I've got four things I think we can do. The first is to go back to its micro foundations. Look, this, uh, this uh, recommendation can apply to almost any framework you use, but it really is required, I think, in RBV. Let's go back to some of the assumed notions of ability or what it is to create something or extend a resource or modify it. What does the process of modification actually entail? The word reconfigure is used a lot. I, I read it in a lot of papers, um, but not always sure what it actually means. Anyway, you get the picture. Let's go back to exploring micro foundations. Second, how do resources and capabilities interact? Uh, mostly the research is used to justify the application of one particular resource or capability, maybe market orientation or something similar, and how it affects an outcome within the firm. But firms are constellations of resources. And the question I would have is, well, is competitive advantage the result of the summation of those or their interaction? Probably the latter, but we don't know. We haven't got good theories to explain why that's the case or indeed how that interaction works. And I think that's a real opportunity. Third, I think we should go back to notions uh, uh, of uh, orientations, of resources as measured by marketers. We love to measure things. Um, and, and ask the question, have we got the aggregation question right here? Um, I think there are levels issues um, that we have glossed over. And, and, and here's an example for you market orientation in firm A as measured uh, with uh, the Narva and Slater model um, uh, would be considered the same as market orientation level in firm B. Well, I look at those two and say, no, they're not. They are completely different firms. That raises for me the notions of thresholds, levels, etc., in the component parts of um, resources like market orientation. Um, could that be a way of making a contribution to the theory itself? I think so. Um, and I think uh, the way, if we revisit some of these ideas, there are incredible opportunities to uh, make contributions and publish. And the final one, and you probably noticed this in your own reading of the research, um, is this notion of dynamic considerations. Um, I think we're seeing a dynamic turn within the literature. Uh, Rob Parmentier, an editor of JM at the moment, has published a number of papers on dynamic consideration. So that's always a pretty good sign uh, when the editor of JM is doing that. So I think that we need to, to look into this uh, theory, RBV, um, more carefully as, as uh, in terms of dynamic considerations. For example, what pathways or trajectories followed by firms uh, lead to constraining effects, so limiting of strategic choice versus enhancing or facilitating effects um, from time one to time two. Embedded with in the firm is this notion of equifinality, the idea that an endpoint can be achieved through multiple pathways. If that's a, an assumption of RBV, then why not go and explore that, that very foundational assumption, a bit like the micro foundation uh, recommendation I made a few minutes ago. So they're my four ideas, my four contributions that you can make to this uh, theory. Um, I hope they've been of interest to you. I hope you enjoy the rest of your uh, docu doctoral colloquium. It's sad that I can't be there. Hopefully I'll be there for Q&A on the day um, and uh, my best wishes for your uh, PhD studies in the years ahead.